Imagery is one of the most popular types of data that is used with ArcGIS, but managing and distributing large volumes of imagery throughout your organization presents some challenges. For example, the map you see here appears to be a single image of a shipyard in the Portland, Oregon metro area. However, the area we are viewing is a typical GIS study area that occurs at the corners of four map sheets. These four images are actually just a subset of a very large volume of imagery that includes 511 separate images stored on a disk drive. GIS managers want to provide users throughout the organization with a seamless image or mosaic that is both fast and accessible from a variety of client applications. The image extension for ArcGIS Server 9.3 makes it possible to take raw or pre-processed imagery and deliver it as a web service. The capabilities of the image extension dramatically shorten the time between the image capture and making imagery readily available to end users as a new image service in an effective image management system. The workflow for implementing image services with the image extension follows the same ArcGIS server pattern that you may already be familiar with, which is Author, Serve, and Use. The first step in implementing the image server extension is to use ArcMap to author the image server definition file. In ArcMap, a new toolbar called the Image Server Definition Editor that allows you to author the image service definition files. For the sake of time, I'll just add one that has already been created. One of the first things you'll notice is the green boundaries or the footprints of the individual images. You may notice that there's some overlap in the image footprints. One of the key features of Image Server is that it creates a seamless mosaic of the images on the fly before imagery is delivered to the client. In addition, there are many image processing functions that can be applied to imagery before it's delivered. For example, I could apply a simple contrast stretch of three standard deviations to improve the appearance of the imagery. Applying the stretch in ArcMap to each of the 511 images certainly wouldn't be practical. A benefit of the image extension is that I can quickly perform the contrast stretch on the server as part of the image service. If I zoom to the full extent of the imagery, you can see the individual footprints that are created for each of the 511 images that will be in the image service. In relation to the subset of images we saw earlier, you can see that this image service will contain a large volume of imagery covering the entire Portland metro area. Once I've authored the image service definition file, I can publish it using ArcGIS Server. You can manage image services in Arc Catalog. So here you see I right click on the image service, publish with ArcGIS Server, set the server name, specify the folder, hit Next. Interoperability is a strong focus of ESRI and image services, and they can be published with capabilities such as WCS and WMS. With WCS, the client is returned the raster data to perform custom rendering or analysis. With WMS, the client is returned a single image, and I can click Next and then finish publishing the image service. The image service is now published on the ArcGIS server and is ready to be used. Let's preview the service in our catalog to verify that it is returning image data. In addition, client applications such as ArcMap can directly use image services. If I select the image service and then I drag and drop that directly into an ArcMap document, you can see that the single image from the image service is being returned. As I zoom to various bookmarks, you can see that imagery is being delivered as a seamless background to supplement my map. Now that I have reached the full resolution of the imagery, it's important to note that the extent we are seeing may include multiple images. Each image may contain unique metadata that I might be interested in viewing. If I right-click on the image server layer, 
and highlight properties, I can go to the metadata tab and see metadata about the image service. If I click on source, I can actually see the individual metadata for each image that's contained in the map extent. The images with the star beside them that are within the extent but aren't currently visible because the newest or last image reloaded is displayed by default. If I select one of the images and I click on the lock raster option and then apply, I can see any particular image of my choice. Web applications can be built to consume image services. The ArcGIS JavaScript API can be used to create a map, a mashup of multiple web services. For example, the application you see here overlays an image service with two ArcGIS server dynamic services. If we look closely at the imagery, you can see a building that's under construction. What happens if we get new imagery, such as updated imagery of areas that are experiencing rapid growth? This new imagery, when delivered, can quickly be incorporated into an existing map service. If you remember earlier, I was working in ArcMap to author the image service definition. ArcMap is also where you update and manage services. The green lines are the footprints of my existing imagery and I can turn on a preview to see the imagery. The workflow to add new imagery is quick. As the image service author, I can add raster datasets to an existing image service. New imagery has been provided as georeferenced JPEG images and copied to a disk on our server somewhere on the network. Next, I'll select the folder where the images are located and the subfolders can be recursively searched automatically. Next, I need to spe specify the spatial reference or projection. In this case, it's NAD83, Oregon North. Second, remember that contrast stretch we talked about earlier. I can add a spatial, a standard deviation stretch of three easily to the service, and it'll be applied on the server side directly to the imagery as it's returned to the client. When we click OK, the subfolders will be searched, the images will be added to the image service, and footprints will be created for the extents of each image. The data is being added to the service, the footprints, as they are being added to the service definition, are getting updated and properly created in the maps or, or into the image service. If I select the footprints of the newly added imagery, you can see the updates are concentrated in the downtown area of the city of Portland. In order to make these new images available to client applications, I need to build the service. I certainly don't need to rebuild it for all 511 images, just update it based on the selection. Here, I can specify to compute the pixel ranges and compile the service. When I click OK, the service will start building. In the service editor window, we can see that the build has begun, and as the process is continuing, we'll start to see feedback about where it is in terms of compiling the service. You can see it's filtering through all of the images that are contained in the image service. And as it completes, it notes that there are zero errors. Next, let's preview the new imagery that's been added to the service. I can use the magnifier window to navigate directly on the border between some of the new and existing imagery. As I expand the magnifier window, you can see that the preview of the image service definition indicates that the new imagery of, is of higher resolution. A key feature of the image extension is its ability to integrate images with different resolutions into a single image service. In our catalog, where I manage my services, I locate the image service and restart it. 